In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve a differential equation using Laplace transforms. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So the very first step when solving one of these is you just take the Laplace transform of both sides. So we'll start by taking the Laplace of the left hand side. So Laplace of y double prime minus 6y prime plus 13y. That's equal to the Laplace of 0. So step one is you take the Laplace of both sides of the DE. The next step is to use the linearity properties of the Laplace transform. So you take uh, the Laplace of each individual piece. This will be the Laplace of y double prime minus 6 times the Laplace of y prime plus 13 times the Laplace of y. And this is equal to, well, the Laplace of 0. Well, the Laplace of 0 is 0. So you could actually start with this step. I just wanted to start with this one just to show you every single step. Maybe this is the first example you're ever seeing, and so it's good to just to see all the steps. So now there are some formulas that you have to use in order to finish this problem. So the first one is that the Laplace of y is equal to pitch fork y of s. So we define it to be that. The second one is that the Laplace of y prime is equal to s, pitchfork y of s, minus y of 0. Pretty cryptic. And the last one we're going to need in this problem is the Laplace of y double prime. That's going to be s squared, pitchfork y of s, minus s, y of 0, minus y prime of 0. You might say, how in the world do you have these memorized? I had to think really, really hard, or somewhat hard, in order to write that down. So here's how I memorize it, and I'm not saying it's the best way, it's just what works for me. So this one's easy. This one's easy. This one is hard. So notice there's a pattern. Look, second derivative, and it starts at 2. See that? And it counts down. 2, 1, and then s to the 0. And it ends at one less derivative. This is the second derivative, so it ends at the first derivative. So first derivative, 0 with derivative, no derivative. 0... 0 with derivative, no derivative. The original function is the 0 with derivative. Look, this is the first derivative. It ends at one less derivative, which is the 0 with derivative. It's the second derivative. It ends at one less derivative, which is the first derivative. And look at this. y prime, s to the first power. y double prime, s squared. So you can take that and try to use that to help you memorize it uh, if you need to, to memorize it. So now let's use these formulas. This will be s squared, pitch fork y of s minus s y of 0 minus y prime of 0. That's the first formula. So all I've written down so far is just this piece here. So the Laplace of y double prime minus 6. And then we have this here, Laplace of y prime. So this one is s pitchfork y of s minus y of 0. And then last but not least, we have 13 pitchfork y of s. It's not really a pitchfork, I think. Um, it, it's, I think it's just psi. It's a, it's a Greek letter. But I just think of a pitchfork, you know, the thing that the guy in the ocean has. Um, okay, so now we use the initial conditions. We impose our initial conditions upon this differential equation. So y of 0 is equal to 0, so this will vanish because this is gone. So we have s squared pitchfork y of s. This is 0. Y prime of 0 is, no, it's negative 7. Very easy to mess up. There's already a negative here, so it'll become a plus 7. And then let's go ahead and distribute this. So this was 0. This was negative 7, so it became a plus 7. Minus 6s, pitchfork y of s. This is gone, so that's good. So when we multiply, it goes away, because this is 0. And then plus 13, pitchfork y of s. And this is equal to 0. Okay, so now we have to solve for pitchfork y. So um, let's go ahead and do that. So I can, we can factor out a pitchfork y of s. And we're left with s squared. So s squared minus 6s plus 13. And this is equal to, well, you just subtract the 7. Good stuff. All right. I don't know why I put the 7 up there so high, so that's where we are. Okay, so now we just have to divide by this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come up here and erase what we have, and I'll write it up here. So pitchfork y of s is equal to negative 7 over this stuff here, s squared minus 6s plus 13. I'm going to go ahead and erase this as well. 
So what did we do? Well, basically we're trying to solve the differential equation. We're trying to, to find y. So we took the Laplace transform of, so, of both sides, we used those formulas, and we solved for pitchfork y. Why did we do that? Well, pitchfork y is something special. Pitchfork y is the Laplace of little y. So the Laplace of little y takes y and sends it to this function. So the inverse Laplace takes this function and sends it back to y. In other words, if we find the inverse Laplace of this, we're going to end up with the solution to the differential equation, which is y. Again, the Laplace takes y and sends it to this. So the inverse Laplace has to take this and send it back to y. So to find the answer, we just have to find the inverse Laplace of this. There is a trick to do that. Whenever you have a quadratic on the bottom, and you're trying to find the inverse of loss, always try to factor first. This is not gonna factor nicely. So then you resort to the next method, which is an ancient technique known as completing the square. So s squared minus 6s, and we're pros here. To complete the square, you take this, divide it by two and square it. So I'll do it down here. Negative six over two is negative three. Negative three squared is nine, boom. So you wanna put a nine here. And say, well, you just can't put a 9 there. Well, sure we can, because we have a 13. And then, so we just need 4 more to get 13. <laughs> That's really clever. So this is equal to negative 7. This is a perfect square trinomial. It will always factor. So what you do is you just take this and divide it by 2. And then here we keep the 4. And I think now we're in a good place to find the inverse Laplace. Again, you try to factor this, and if you can't, complete the square. So you just basically write this piece down again. Negative 6 over 2 is negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. You're at 9 now. How do you get from 9 to 13? You add 4. To get from here to here, it's always a parenthesis. There's always a 2, and you just always divide it by 2. All right, let's finish this bad boy. So y is going to be the inverse Laplace of all of this stuff. So let's go ahead and write that out. So y is equal to, let's pull out that negative 7, inverse Laplace. So then we have this, um, s minus 3 squared plus 4. I want to write the 4 as 2 squared. So I pulled out the negative 7 and I haven't written anything here yet. So you'll notice that this almost looks like, uh, there's a 1 here. This is going to be a sine. Remember the formula for sine is this. So whenever there's a number up top and on the bottom it's squared, you're going to get sine kt. So here, the k has to be here, right? So k is 2, so you have to put a 2 here, okay, to make it match. So you can use this formula, and then you have to take away the 2. But it still doesn't match, so what do you do next? You do a shift. So this is the inverse Laplace of 2 over s squared plus 2 squared, and you do your shift. You write the line, and you go from s to s minus 3. This is, we're using the first translation theorem. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. If this is like your first Laplace transform video that you've ever watched in your entire life, you're gonna be like, oh my god, what is going on? Hopefully it's not. Hopefully you know a little bit about Laplace transforms um, if you're watching this video. If not, it's okay. You can just absorb it all in and suck it all in and just like learn some math. The 2 needs to be there because it needs to match the formula, but then this s minus 3 needs to be an s. So we draw a line and we shift it. When we do that, when we do that, we get an exponential function. So this is negative 7 halves. The shift is going to give us an e to the 3t. That's the first translation theorem. So whenever you go from s to s minus a, it gives you an e to the at. Remember, shifts become, become exponentials, and exponentials become shifts. And this is a sine 2t. And that, my friends, is the solution to the de. So y is equal to this thing right here. So pretty, pretty nice problem. Uh, at the end, you do have to use a shift. Um, you, do, you do have to do some adjustments with, with the algebra. You have to put the two there to make it match. When you do the shift, it gives you the E. So if it's S minus three, you get an E to the three T. Really, really nice question. It's not too hard, but it does like require that you know um, a, lo a lot of stuff. I hope this video uh, has been helpful. Take care.